All right, hello guys, and welcome back to the MS Excel course on Learn.io. Today we're going to be talking about creating charts and graphs on Excel. Um, and for anybody who's entering middle school or high school, especially if you're doing science fair, this is probably going to be one of the most important and useful lessons for you because Excel can just make charts so quickly and so easily. Um, it's incredible. So we'll start off with, let's say you have a chart like this one right here, data table with X coordinates or on your X axis, you want these to be your values on your Y axis, you want these to be your values. You got the dot, right? Two, four, four, sixteen, so on and so forth. And basically here you're creating a scatter plot um, of all the dots. So to insert scatter plots, uh, let's actually show you. So you'll start off on the home tab, you go to the insert tab, highlight all the data values that you want. I'm also highlighting X and Y uh, just as axis titles. Um, and then go to this one right here, which has the dots. If you hover over it, it'll show insert scatter X, Y or bubble chart. Um, and so it'll give you different options. You can use uh, simple scatter plots, a scatter plot with a curved line that goes through it, scatter plot with straight lines connecting each dot, or just the line, or just a curved line. I'm going to pick a curved line alone because I think that represents this data pretty well, um, since I really just used a exponential equation when I was figuring out these numbers. And it's that simple. Here you go and you have your graph. If I want to change the title, I can change it from here. Uh, blah, blah, cool, beautiful graph. We love it. <laughs> But yeah, so that's how you create a simple scatter plot. The reason why I didn't, um, you might have noticed in the insert tab, this looks like it would be really cool to make the line charts. Trouble with this is um, if you have two different data sets, it will actually create uh, two different lines out of it. So if you'll see here, it created two lines, one for the first set of data I have right here and one for the second data I have, second set I have right here. Um, and that's just how the line graphs are, or the, yeah, the line charts are going to be on Excel. Uh, they will always assume that you're going up by one. Uh, although you could go in, press this plus, add its chart elements, uh, axis, axis titles. Uh, if you're doing, um, I know for physics especially, we always need axis titles, you always need to specify what unit you're measuring in and what quantity you're measuring on each axis. Um, you have a legend on the bottom since this one has two different data points that are being plotted. Uh, you can have grid lines, you can have more or less error bars. Um, basically mean, you know, if there's a chance that the data that you have isn't 100% accurate, but you think it's like 95% accurate, you can have a 5% error bar and you can basically click yes, click on the arrow, standard error percentage, you can do whatever you want to edit that error bar. Uh, you can add a data table to the bottom, data labels, um, you know, don't look the best. I know on Google Sheets, the data labels look a little bit better than this. Um, and I mean, you can do a whole bunch with uh, that edit feature. But yeah, that's line graphs and scatter plots. Uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of data here, but that's because I want to show you a couple other types of graphs. So let's say I wanted to create a graph of profit. You know, usually in movies and TV shows, you'll see this kind of graph, just a line. But sometimes what people will use actually instead is a bar graph with each bar representing a different year. Um, not necessarily as common, but it does happen. So I could click right here on these three bars and it'll give me the option for 2D column graphs, 3D column graphs, which look pretty cool, but uh, you don't always want to use those just because if a 2D column, if a 2D graph works, 3D just seems a bit excessive. Sideways bar graphs, um, this would be better if you're doing like race results or progress on a race or something of that sort uh, where distance becomes relevant. For money, you really don't want to do the bar graphs, uh, but it has its uses. So I could just click on 2D column and you'll see there's different types. Um, I'll get into those in just a minute. And here we go. Every year it'll show me how much profit we make. And now just to show off uh, one other cool feature on the bar graphs. If I select this year one and year two, actually, let me drag this over so it has all the years. 
And if you'll remember from our first lesson, if you drag that little box in the corner, it'll recognize the pattern and copy it to all the remaining cells. So if I select all of these and then insert my bar graph, notice the bottom, year one, year two, year three. It uses these data points as uh, titles for each bar. So that's just a pretty cool feature, uh, really useful. It saves you a bit of time when you're trying to make it look uh, professional. And so now let's talk a little bit about the different types of bar graphs. So you'll see I'm highlighting the second column just to demonstrate this. But here, your first type is a clustered column. And what this does is each year it'll show you both your data set, your data points. So in this case, for the first year, it'd be 2,300,000 and 1 million right next to each other. So you can compare how high they are, how short they are. Um, maybe if you're trying to talk about how uh, there was a lot of guys in a class uh, one year and very few girls, and then slowly that changed to where there was more girls and less guys. Um, this might be one way to show that. You'll see the you'll see the guys kind of going down their column, the girls column going up. That's one way to show it. Um, another type of graph you can have you have here is the stacked column. Oh, okay, it's removing my previews, so we'll create it. Um, and basically, this will stack the two data points on top of each other. So the blue goes up to two, uh, 2.3 million, and then the 1 million orange above that. So maybe if you have a total profit of something, and the 2.3 million is your sales, and 1 million is subscriptions, or something like that, right? Where it'll show you your total profit, but then it'll also show you the breakdown of like how much of that relatively comes from different sources. Of course, you could use any of this for all sorts of other uses. It doesn't have to be finance. It doesn't have to be business. Um, I'm just using those examples because, you know, I titled this profit over the years and I have to make them relevant. Uh, but yeah, and then the last type, hopefully it'll show me the preview this time. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, is percent. So this will treat the total amount. So in this case, for year one, it would be 3.3 million as 100%, and it'll show you how much uh, percent of that came from uh, the first part right here, how much of that came from the second part, right? So it'll be like seven, so in this first case, 70% came from this first value point, which I think we said last time was uh, what, profits or revenue from sales, and then 30% comes from subscriptions, and that value changes. So all of these have their own uses. Um, they're all great in their own way. But yeah, you just have to be kind of a little mindful when you're picking which one you really want to use based on what information you really want to share. Uh, and then the last thing, we're just going to talk about pie charts real fast, because why not? So here it might be better to highlight both of these separately. So in one year, uh, we have 2.3 2 million from sales, 1 million from subscriptions. I want to visualize that really easily. Cool. Let's make a 2D pie chart. Simple as that. Just select your data and you're done. Uh, chart title. I don't know, I could just title this uh, sales versus subscriptions or something simple like that, right? But this gives you really a lot of the information. Um, if you want to make this a little nicer, you can add chart elements, you can do data labels, we will show you the different numbers. Um, you could edit them to basically be outside, inside, best fit, all sorts of stuff you can do with it. You can click more options and it'll actually give you all of this on the side. You can edit the labels, you can edit the text, you can edit um, the size, the shadows, just there's so many things you can edit with it. Honestly, I'm not going to get too much into all of those different customizations. I really recommend you just explore a little bit, have some fun, mess around. Um, as you can see up here, there's also a bunch of different designs you can pick from. You can make it dark, sleek, different fonts, uh, have a little kind of cool looking one here. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with it, and uh, now that you know some of the basics of how it works, I really recommend just going in and trying all of this out for yourself. That's the best way to learn. So hopefully this helps you understand this a little bit, and I hope to see you soon.